Hello, just a moment ago to Stillwater and to a place to put one's things. So um, it's a very hot day. I'm going to not drink any more water during the interview. <laughs> and I'm going to place this here to mark our shift <laughs> to focusing on the record that comes out yeah. about uh, 25 years. Mm -hmm. As our conversation continues, we were just talking about freedom, a different sense of freedom being a father, you can't just decide to go to Duluth all of a sudden. You right. can't decide to not go to Duluth because you need to finish writing a song. Right. There's six great songs on this record. Thank you. Is there any song where you did have a sense of inspiration and where there is a similar process? That yeah. Said, yeah. The last song, Until the End, Until the end. Uh, I wrote that for my son Oak. Oh, and, uh, speaking of food. <laughs> yeah, and it was before he was even born. And we didn't yeah. know if we were having a boy or a girl. We didn't find out. And, um, I, all we knew is somebody was going to be joining us at some point soon. Yeah. And uh, it's the first time I've ever like really just wept while writing a song. Wow. And to the point where my wife was like, are you able to play that song for people? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I think so. <laughs> Come to ice ice tomorrow. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, I can get through it now. Yeah. Uh, but it really, you know, when you, when you're, when you're going to have a kid, you get a lot of unsolicited advice. One of the things that people consistently said to me was, uh, you, you don't know how much you can love somebody until you really hold that your baby for the first time. When you're biologically connected to another yeah. human, uh, there's a whole different experience. And it, it's when you have your, your life partner with you and, and the two of you are connected to this other being. Yes who not only is fully dependent on you, but uh, is also going to reflect yourself. You you not only just want to strive to be a better person for that other individual, but you the amount of love and emotion, and love is almost not a strong enough word for it, because it's, mm -hmm. um, it's so much greater than that. It's mm -hmm. bigger than just the human idea of love. It's a biological connection to, to God or the universe. Yes, and, yes. and it's this totally different experience. And so capturing that in a song is not an easy thing to do. Um, and when, But when you feel like you, you, you tap into that a little bit, um, that's why I was so emotional writing it. Yeah. And when I held it for the first time, I knew exactly what that song meant to me. Wow. And, so uh, you had the song ready and then this... And then... Luckily, because all once you have the oak in your hands, mm -hmm. then you've got oak in your hands. Yeah. <laughs> then, but you had the song already. You, you were able to. I was able to connect. Accurately preempt. Yeah. I was able that. to connect with the idea on a, on a more literal and experiential level, and it was really, it's, it was amazing. Yeah. And now, when I still when I play that song now, I. There's a few songs that I play that I don't. I don't think I ever open my eyes during a song because I'm. I'm not. It's not for anybody in the room but myself. And hmm. uh, and Oak. And Oak. Yeah. Yeah. And my wife. <laughs> yeah. But uh, my performance of that song is very selfish. It's just I yeah. want to sing this song because of how it makes me feel. And yeah. if you want to tap, you want to come with me. That's great. If you don't want to, you don't need to. This isn't for you. It's that's, interesting that there are some different songs demand different treatment don't they uh, and that song actually it's funny you say that because that song demands respect in itself mm -hmm. without I don't I, I don't have to ask a crowd to, like if you're if I'm playing a place like Ice House inevitably there are some people that are talking and for the most yep. part my folks that come to my shows um, are very respectful yeah. um, and, and pretty they're there to listen and um that comes along with storytelling and songs and the way I uh, shape a set and the way I interact with the crowd. That yeah. uh, that kind of demands that a little bit. It does. But um, certain songs, there's a reverence for certain songs it's that people can just feel the moment it starts or the moment I explain what the song's about. There's a different, you know, there's a shift in the environment in the room and you can literally feel the shift take place. And then there's that reverence for that song. And then after that, it can kind of kind of relaxes again. But people are really intent on listening to those tunes. And there's yeah. a few of them that I do that are like that. Um, my cover of Hallelujah is one of them. Oh, yeah. And people yeah. just, there's a different reverence for that song. And it's not, I didn't write that song, but um, it's just the song. 
it's in a different category than something to listen to. It's something to feel. Is it the the earnestness of the address, or there's, there's just one of a number? Like of the way it's things. delivered. Yeah. So in until the end, until the end, until the end, I'll be right there with you, like I was when when you began. Yeah, when you began. Yeah, like I was there when he was born. And, yeah. Uh, we had we had a home birth. My wife on her blog, um, the contented bee. Uh, she has her whole birth story on there. It's this beautiful birth story, and it was a tough day. She labored for thirty hours. Wow. And uh, it was it's tough. It was exhausting. It's a day and a bit. Watching her do that, I was like, I, mean, I was just blown away. But um, being able to be a part of it. It's not like it was back in the you know the fifties and sixties where the dads just sat with cigars in the waiting room and then the baby oh your baby was born it's a boy it's a girl, but uh, now it's uh, in that experience being uh, having the baby at home with a birth team there and um, some people would say we're crazy and that's one of the other things going back to <laughs> giving you advice we had uh, somebody said to us oh you're thinking about having your baby at home do yourself a favor and don't. don't. <laughs> Well, we're, we're doing that, but thanks for your support and advice. <laughs> I don't know. We're talking about birth and not my record, but <laughs> that's it's part of what, I, it's what I'm passionate about is like yes. my family and, and all of that. So. Oh, it's because of the song until the end. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's only appropriate, I think, that um, with the emphasis on being there with someone, there's a nice affinity between the idea of you being there with your wife and with Oak. Yeah. And then the audience at Ice House or anywhere else being there with you. There's this sense of certain barriers having been let down and yeah. a co presence, a truly being. Yeah, you're right there. about that. And I think that any the artists that I've watched, that I've connected to, and, and when I go see a show, I, I, I love watching the music. And I, from a musician standpoint, I end up analyzing a show. Yeah. But from a songwriter standpoint, and from a consumer of the show standpoint, yeah, um, the songs and the moments that I really connect to are those moments. Those moments that mean something. The songs that matter. <laughs> and there are songs that are good songs that don't matter. <laughs> and there are songs that are that can be great songs. It's a great song. It doesn't matter. But the it songs. It's like deeper existential significance. So. It sounds great. There's a difference between wanting, having a song that makes you want to move and having a song that moves you. Yeah. And uh, the songs that move you, I think, are the ones that, that matter. Yeah. And that's, that's the beauty of songs like Until the End or, or songs like Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Those are songs that move you and they're I, different. I feel like this EP... This EP mm-hmm. um, is a collection of songs that move you. Yeah. Through. If on the previous two LPs we have songs about movement and moving, going to Duluth, yeah, <laughs> roaring down. Like, I could do a whole record of songs about places. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I just you, I have uh, songs about places. I yeah. Don't know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but this one, there aren't references to this specific locality. Um, right. And instead, there's a sense of, and this kind of came through a little bit in Nicola Island. Let's go to Nicola Island and make Nicola Island ours. Um, now we have a song called You Feel Like Home, mm-hmm. for example. Yeah. So it's almost like being at home. The being at home is with one's family, is mm-hmm. with one's wife and with one's son. Yeah, uh, I think there's a line that talks about like, it doesn't matter where we are when I'm, when I'm with you. It doesn't matter where we are yeah. I feel like I'm home when I'm with you that song's about somebody that uh, finding somebody that's so cozy and comfortable that you feel like you feel like that moment when you walk finally walk into the house after a long day yes like oh, I'm home and you can feel that way with somebody else oh, I'm just I'm, I'm home it doesn't matter where we are I'm, how did, home, I'm home with you how did you um, how did this song come into being um, I wrote this song with my friend Sue Sandberg uh, she lives in Los Angeles, and she's a songwriter for uh, a publishing company that I work with as well, um, and called Zinc Music. And 
this was uh, this was one of the briefs for that for putting movies and or songs in like movies, television commercials, and things like that. And I've written a lot of songs like that, and for those things, mm-hmm. and songs that people will never hear, and or they wouldn't hear it unless it gets picked up. But this was one that I just I loved it, and uh, I felt something. It's that that it's it's less of a song that moves you, and more of a song that makes you want to move. And, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And I love that aspect of it. Yeah. Um, so it's celebration. Yeah. Um, there's different ways of celebrating. Mm-hmm. There? So yeah. sometimes reverence and just stillness and acknowledgement of uh, the truth of the bond. That's what. That's one way of revering a beautiful thing. Yeah. About one's human experience. And even going through the process of creating art that says that like a yes. song a song that says that yeah um is reverence for that moment enough i think but this is celebrating this yeah. is a, this is like celebration oh yeah celebration of that moment yeah that we were talking about the storm before yeah you're witnessing a storm when you're inspired to write roaring dan mm-hmm. uh, a storm showed up uh, at another point in that in the interview too um and there's a storm there's a tidal wave in you feel like her. Oh, yeah. So it's interesting how you kind of take that imagery and almost like, not in a bad way, domesticate that imagery, like the power of the tidal wave. Yeah, love can be a really overwhelming thing that can, um, a tidal wave can do a lot of damage. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, you know, tidal wave, people think like, oh, that's that's going to ruin everything and flood, it's flooding and it's going to ruin things. But it's like a tidal wave in my heart is what the lyric says and it's kind of more of just a, it's, it's overwhelming. It fills in all the cracks and uh, the other thing about a tidal wave is you never bring it on yourself. Hmm. Uh, a sense of the sublime, perhaps something being beyond comprehension or beyond one's power. Yeah, and uh, when I think about my wife, uh, I, I wasn't, I didn't want to get married at 26 when I was 21. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, the idea of that, ma- being married before I'm 30? No way. <laughs> and <laughs> the then, part of you that's at all like roaring down. Right, but then, but then I find somebody like her and then I go, well, that's rude. I, I, I'm in love and I, you never asked my permission. You never, and you just came in like a tidal wave, and uh, I had no idea. I had nothing I could do but surrender to it. What was the principle of selection uh, with this particular EP? Well, I got to work um, with John Fields on this record, oh, okay. and um, he's a. I mean, it's the first time I've ever worked with like a, a well-known big-name producer. And uh, he had just moved back to Minneapolis within the last year, and uh, we uh, the opportunity to come up came up to work with him, and mm-hmm. um, he seemed excited about it, and I was very excited about it, and um, all understandable. He's got kind of a he he can do anything, you know, but he's also a lot of what he's done has a, a stamp of like pop pop music on it. And uh, when he's worked with people like Nick Jonas and Miley Cyrus and Pink and mm-hmm. stuff like that, where you go, okay, like he's got a cool twist on pop stuff, and he's got a really good ear for that. And so, the, uh, just from a musical standpoint, I was thinking, well, what what are some of the songs that could fit into that the, mold? Yes, because if you listen to Roaring Dan, that record, it's the nautical theme, but it's a lot of very just like acoustic kind of almost folky at times and we still did a lot of organic sounds in this record and it is definitely not it, it's pop has pop sensibility but it's not like a pop record and that's just the genius that is john fields working sure. at yeah. work but um but and then the come on home record is less folky and it's a, it's a little it touches more in the world of americana almost country at times there's no pedal steel on it but we emulated some pedal steel things and uh <laughs> Which song it, it in kinda, particular is uh, like "Come On Home" has the song "Come On, the song Come on Home" has a uh, you know some slide guitar in there and of course, um, yeah. you know there's there's a when people ask me what kind of music I play what is my what kind of, what's your genre what kind of music to play I always say Americana white guy soul <laughs> and uh, 
And I think it kind of captures that, but... Um, I shouldn't say tea. <laughs> but this is the most pop forward record I've ever done. And so yes. when I was choosing songs, I was thinking more about that. So you, you referenced 25 years uh, just a moment ago, which is of course the title track. Mm -hmm. There's something very counterintuitive about this song because it's called 25 years, but it's essentially a, not about 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's just this, uh, this idea. I mean, there, the chorus, if you add them all up, it talks about 75 years. Yes, exactly. And then, yeah. and then if, I add, if you add the, the second verse, it talks about if, if we live to be 100. And it's, it's a love song. It's, yeah. um, a lot of people have said, oh, it's going to be, I've had a lot of people share with me. That we're, we're using that as our wedding song, or yes. uh, you know, yeah. one of our wedding songs, or we're doing a music or a video for our wedding, and we're putting that in the song. And it kind of is; it can be a wedding song very easily, um, but it's a love song. Twenty-five years is a long time. It's a quarter of a century. So, yeah. so that's I understand that correctly. That's the idea. I'm going to be with you for a long time. And in twenty-five years from now, I'm going to look. I'm look, still going to be looking at you, going, "How did I?" How did I land this woman? This is amazing, and uh, and then 25 years after that, we're still gonna be in love. Like we're still, our story's not over. Yeah. And all we're, we're, all we're gonna need is another 25 years. And at that point, we'll be, you know, we got married at 26. So at that point, we'll be in our 70s. And then, oh, we just need another 25 years. And if we live to be 100, so just thinking about that, and we chances are not gonna live to be 100. Yeah. Although my great grandmother, who just passed away a couple of weeks ago. Um, she lived to be 104. Wow, that's a long life. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about her too. I was, you know, I was when you were together. writing this song. Well, I was thinking about her when I was think, writing the part about when the fact we lived to be 100. I, I, yeah. I, I, she's the only person I've ever known that um, is over, was over 100. And uh, so I was thinking about her. So my grandma's gonna be 104 this year. And when I was writing that song, and uh, yeah, it's crazy. And she, you know, she lost her husband. She lived most of her life without him. They, they weren't. He he died very young. Mm. And but the idea of I was thinking about that too. I was like, man, we could be together for that many years. How many lifetimes uh, of other people's lives could we live if we were together for all? If we lived to be 100 and we were still married. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. It really is. So, uh, and that what, song is comes from uh, my wife. Every anniversary, uh, at some point, we'll put on her wedding dress and we'll dance to the song she walked down the aisle to. And, ah, dancing in the, uh, in dancing the in the kitchen and, and Louis playing trumpet on the radio. And uh, so it's it, it kind of paints a picture of something that is very dear to me and to us. And uh, it's just a, that's where that's where the inspiration came from. It was from that story, and then it turned into this beautiful like. This happens every year, so in 25 years, when this is happening still... Yeah, uh, it's when this has happened 25 times. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's going to be just this... I'll just be watching you and dancing with you in the kitchen going, this is... How did I find this amazing person? How did, how did the universe connect the two of us? And, yeah. Uh, and how, how, did I luck, how did I get this lucky? And so that's all the, that's where the inspiration came from. That's yeah. All, so. You highlighted the significance of storytelling. Yeah. Um, so how did you go about with uh, with either this song or another on the record? How did you go about finding these right moments, like um, beginning the song with dancing in the kitchen, Louise playing trumpet on the radio, you're spinning in that white dress that you wore so long ago, now I've been trying to slow down, but time keeps moving faster, dragging me along. That's that works so well as the first verse because not only does it zoom right in on the particular moment, a, a relatable but very idiosyncratic moment, right? Um, but also it introduces the theme of time moving fast, which yeah. is kind of crucial the 25, the, the 25, mm, yeah. 25 years. Yeah, and I, I, I didn't write this song by myself, I wrote this to my friend Tom Beaupre mm. um, down in Nashville, and mm -hmm. Tom plays bass for a very uh, bro country band called Florida Georgia Line mm -hmm. and uh, he's a he's a great songwriter we've written we wrote two songs on this record 25 years and hero we wrote together oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and so we're you know bouncing ideas off of each other and whenever you're in a co-writing situation with somebody that you really gel with uh, 
you just kind of work together about, oh, and, and then it, it could do this, and then, oh, what if we brought this idea in? And then you're doing those things together, and it, you, it's easier to, to write a more cohesive, balanced, yeah. and storytelling song. And How did the two of you work together to write Hero? Uh, I mean, we sat down, and I said, I have this idea to write a song. Um, I have this idea, the song idea, and he said, well, yeah, let's work on it, and we just we sat down and, and we worked on it together to whenever we think whenever I think of heroes I think about superheroes and I worked with an organization for a long time called uh, Youth Frontiers where we went to schools and talked to students about how to treat each other better how to treat themselves better and we talk about you know you could be a hero to somebody who's being bullied hmm. and uh not all heroes wear capes type of thing, you know? Sure. And uh, so... It's a heroic this, thing for you to be doing. Yeah, and the second it's verse of that song, and it was Tom's idea to bring it in, was uh, uh, the, there's a spotlight in the clouds, and it's kind of like this bat, the Batman thing, you know? It's a uh, spotlight in the clouds, and uh, I don't remember what the exact lyric is. <laughs> spotlight <laughs> in the dark, oh, yeah. shining in the clouds above the town. Yeah. Um, I... Convenient. Yeah, you've got him right <laughs> um, there. Are you around? Because you told me if, if I, I need you, you, I could count on you to come through. And like a hero. Like a hero. Like a hero. Yeah. And it's like uh, it's just one of those moments where we. It's important to be vulnerable mm. and admit when you need some help and admit when you just need to talk to somebody mm. and uh, I feel like this song can allow somebody to give somebody permission. To say, hey, I need some help. Yeah. Uh, I need somebody to talk to. I need a hero in this moment. And it's not necessarily about a specific thing like bullying or something like that, but it's more about there's a lot of hurting people. And if you tell someone you're gonna be there for them, be there for them. Yeah. And uh, and when you when you've had people that have said that they're there for you, reach out to them. When you, when you need to talk to somebody, it's yes. When you need to take that mental health day from work, do that. Yeah, and that's br- that's what that song is kind of. I want I wanted to be able to give permission for people to be vulnerable, but also be vulnerable myself. And I know that with you, I find the strength to make my way through to a brand new start. Yeah. So we've got fire, and you're not in a body. Yeah. They're at the center of the record tracks three and four. Yeah, let's and talk about You're Not Anybody last. Yes, that is my favorite. Is it? Actually. I think it's my favorite too. Great, okay, yeah. and that was my uh. plan. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, as, we, as we're as we nearing the end of the episode, mm-hmm. uh, we're going on a journey through, uh, right up from, through the heart mm-hmm. of uh, 25 years. Yeah. Uh, and right now we're entering the fire. And it opens with uh, this excellent guitar riff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's uh, that's Tyler Burkham playing ah. guitar. <laughs> and it kind of when we were that's in the studio, we, playing guitar. we we had that uh, a moment where John Fields and I and Tyler Burkham were all in the studio together, just the yeah. three of us, and. Uh, Tyler's trying different things, and he comes up with this line, and the guitar tone that was coming out of it was very reminiscent to me of like a Third Eye Blind from the record that Jumper was on, and mm-hmm. uh, I look uh, that that tone, I was like, keep, let's keep that, and let's not, <laughs> don't change that. That's, that's great. It's just kind of like this throwback, weird '90s in the middle of this record is just like this really round, aggressive guitar tone that Ty and Tyler just so, such a good player just that perfect touch and uh, he's, he's ripping that line and I was like that's perfect yeah <laughs> because it evokes the fire doesn't it there's the scent that your love is a fire yeah and it's, the song doesn't start easy it just boom do 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 you're right in it and uh, as we are yeah it's yeah. kind of like when you're waking up in the middle of a fire you know it's just a very dark and scary thing to think about but this is a different kind of fire it's uh yeah it's like the tidal wave as well yeah. it's, a, it's yeah. interesting how to write the record these things that would be potentially dangerous yeah. because they are powerful yeah that power gets harnessed well fire can do a lot of damage but it can also warm you and yeah. it can also uh allow you to cook food which can give you life and uh 
So the, the fire is one of the most fascinating elements. But it never and, loses but, its potential to damage. Or so it's interesting in this song, which is celebrating mm -hmm. the passion and the fiery component of a relationship. It's got lyrics like "Your touch igniting." There's no going back, and we're not even trying. So there's a sense. Like the tidal wave, mm -hmm. like this, this is a sense of something being surrender. sublime. Surrender, yeah. exactly. Um, let's go with this. It's going to be okay. Like this doesn't, this isn't a danger, but it's not something that we can control. Well, if you, if the way you think about it, love can be that way too. You know, yeah, it could be exactly. if it's used incorrectly, or if it's not taken care of, it can cause a lot of damage. took her journey through the fire mm -hmm. and have ended up at a final destination, which is You're Not Anybody, yeah. which, speaking of rude, might seem rude. It's a rude <laughs> song title. It's and I like that. Title. I like that twist. Yeah, exactly. Because it's You're Not Anybody. It's like, it's not, it sounds like a very childish insult on a playground. Like, whatever, you're not anybody. <laughs> uh, but And I love that it does that because you don't, you're, you don't know what you're getting into. Works. Yeah. yeah. And um, the verses, if we were to just have the verses, uh -huh. then um, one might be left with that impression or at least that it's like a sad song. That's the first verse. All of my life I've been afraid of losing somebody if I let them in. So I've made up my mind and pushed them away. Don't need a care. Don't need anybody. Yeah. No. So the solitary figure, um, we were talking before about the barriers that it's difficult to, to bring down. Mm -hmm. And this is a sadly kind of relatable thing. Mm -hmm. Most people, any, I would go so far as to say any person will have felt, will feel like this at times. Yeah. But then what happens when yeah. you transition from verse to chorus? Yeah, the chorus resolves the issue at hand. Yes. And to be vulnerable and honest, this is one of my more vulnerable and honest songs. Yeah. Because this isn't like a, I'm writing it from this guy's perspective. This was me after a lot of whiskey, after a long work day in the studio. Uh, with the lights down low, I, I wrote this guitar, this song. The originally, the original song is written in this like folky three four uh, three four time, um, and it, you know the, the 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 song of the record is. <laughs> and Aaron Sterling played drums on us, and he's just got an amazing feel, and <laughs> and the the song kind of sounds something like it could be on Con John Mayer's Continuum record but the original <laughs> song was very Civil Wars esque ah, yeah and it was this 3-4 boom 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 all of my life I've been afraid of losing somebody if I let them in and it's a very morose mm vibe to the original song more in keeping with those lyrics yeah and yeah. then and the original um, melody for for the chorus was and, but you 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 you're not anybody and it's just very like honest heartfelt mm. like I thought I, 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 I've been keeping everyone at bay, and I personally am. Uh, I love people, and I'm a very I'm an extreme extrovert. If I'm sitting in a house all day by myself, I'm just I kind of start to go crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I just like I need I need a conversation. I need to talk to people. Even if, and, uh, <laughs> I, I, that's how I feel. That's a conversation. Uh, today. <laughs> yeah, I feel great. Um, but. I've also, I've, and something just becoming self-aware as you get older, I've realized that I've brought a lot of friends and a lot of people in to a point. Mm. And then there's a, a few, select few folks that I've really let in that totally. to, yeah, to really be close. Um, but for the most part, I keep everyone at bay. I, I thought, I don't, I can do it on my own. I don't need anybody. But you're not anybody. And it's just yeah. another way of saying I need you. Of course, and, yeah. Uh, and I think it's just a beautiful, I think it's a beautiful song. It is. A, it, yeah, I think it's my, like I said, I think it's my favorite 
song on the record, maybe my favorite song of yours, because it's so... Did it move you? It did move me. See, the songs yes. that matter, the songs <laughs> that become the favorite songs are the yeah. songs that move you. Yeah, yeah. it's so nuanced. Yeah. It's, well, it's both, I can appreciate the craftsmanship, mm. like the artistry, the playing with song form, the mm. fact that the verses, if you didn't have the choruses, the song would mean something totally different. Totally different, yeah. And it's just, you know, just to find the right but you're not anybody. Those mm. four words um, transform everything, and then when you combine them with that, <laughs> like yeah, that, like, I wanted it to fit the record, and so I re, I, re I wanted the song on the record, yeah. but it wasn't gonna make sense on this record, being the song originally was. Um, John Fields, I mean, he plays bass. He played bass on the whole record except for this song, mm. and he played a lot of guitar and keys and things. And my brother came in, and um, he's the one that kind of kind of drove that it's a like a Rhodes or Whirly sound with a with a wah pedal it kind of has this spanky attitude to it but um, Jim Anton is a bass player from yes. town here and uh, extremely talented and, and just got an amazing feel and he had a show at the Ice House that he was playing at and uh, that night, and he was in, he you know, he was down in the general vicinity of where we were at, and uh, he's good friends with John Fields, so we, there was a, a ring at the door, and John said, who's here? So he went over, and it was Jim. He was just coming by to say hi. And John just handed him a bass and said, will you play on this? <laughs> okay. And I, I sat there uh, on the couch, kind of, I was kind of lounging, I was laying, leaning way back, and Jim was sitting next to me, and uh, start playing. He goes, "What are the chords?" And he hits record. I said, four boom, do, do, da, one, do, 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 boom." And that's how we tracked the whole song, uh, with me telling him what the next chord was. Wow! The second before the, because he didn't know that, the song. That is the take. And and he did, I think, two takes through, and then we punched something in, and then he was done. Um, well, that speaks to the craftsmanship that the Jim Town brings to the table. That song, the drums literally just <laughs> the whole song, and it doesn't really go anywhere from there. And the whole song kind of just stays, and it's it's not stagnant; it moves. Yeah. But it's it just kind of sits here the whole song. And I don't I, I do a lot of dynamics in my songwriting, and this was just different. This was just kind of just kind of sits here the whole time. Yeah. And um, that is, I think. You know, looking back, and I wasn't necessarily consciously thinking this at the time, but maybe subconsciously, looking back at it, um, it could be, it's very true to the song, like yeah. to the lyrics, because it's, you know, you have moments where you're feeling lonely or down, and you have moments where you're feeling up and feeling good, and, but in the end, we're all on this, like, consistent, steady yeah. movement of life, yeah. through life, and Keep you're going to have all these different emotions and feelings and experiences, but in the end, this train is still moving and we're still going forward. Yeah. And that's kind of the truth of the song because it kind of just has that vibe the whole time. Keeping composure despite the peaks and troughs. Mm -hmm. And and it's kind of, it's jaunty and it's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. So despite, and the lyrics allow us to explore some really dark places, but consistently this composure is kept. We have a sense of movement. We have a sense of being steadfast mm -hmm. and like sticking to your guns and and the conclude like that really the nuanced resolve. insight. Yeah, the resolve yeah. to to remember mm -hmm. to remember that you have these people that you can turn to. Yeah, and you know, just like anything, if you got a rainy day, you got a week of rain. It really makes you appreciate the sun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, and when you have those bad days, those hard moments, it really makes you appreciate the love and the feelings and the people that are around you that are positive and good. Yeah. This, uh, this week I'm appreciating the rain, the idea of the rain, because um, <laughs> it, is, it is sunny. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and hot. <laughs> sunny and hot. I could definitely use the, the rain to break the humidity. But uh, the, another cool thing about that song is that's my wife's debut on a record for oh, me. Oh, what's she So playing? she sings at the end, uh, on, the, on the bridge, she oh, sings that, wow. You're not, you're not, and I go, You're not just anybody, <laughs> baby. 
Uh, and she, but she's the one. She's got a lot of layered vocals in there. We did at my studio, and I sent it over to John, and it got mixed with beat by John and, and Paul Hager. But uh, she, she's she's the one singing that. Yana, Yana. She's got attitude in <laughs> it's spanking. She's great. Well, she uh, she very clearly she very clearly does like in you know from uh, the little snippets of you know from the little anecdotes we've we've heard and from hearing. Do that. I can understand your experience of the fire in the tidal wave. Yeah. Uh, the rude, <laughs> the rude. fire in tidal wave it's that rude. engulfed you. Um, <laughs> she's not just anybody. You're not just anybody either. Wow. And I'm, Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm very um, I'm honored that you that you've come in today. I'm excited for tomorrow's rep release at oh, thanks. Ice I hope that they serve Roaring Dan. Um, if so, Roaring Dan I shall... <laughs> that well, will be the final. I don't think they do. I uh, don't think they do either. But I have a bottle of it at the studio, so you'll have to come oh, by the studio and, and have a little Roaring Dan. <laughs>